What if gorillas were introduced into the Amazonian rainforest? Let us introduce to you the largest living ape, the gorilla. Now, let us introduce to you the largest rainforest in the world, the Amazonian rainforest. The Amazon and the gorilla are separated by the entire Atlantic Ocean and a good deal of ground in both South America and Africa. It's safe to say that the two have never been formally introduced. That's what we're here to do, to make the introduction of a lifetime. Gorilla, meet the Amazon. Amazon, meet the gorilla. Now what will happen when the two are introduced to one another? How much of a drastic shift can we expect to see? Who is the gorilla? First, let's learn more about the gorilla. And because we want to go with the largest living ape, and there are technically multiple subspecies of gorilla, let's go with the largest gorilla, the Eastern Lowland Gorilla. Not only is the Eastern Lowland Gorilla the largest of any living ape, it's the largest of any living primate. He's a big guy. The females are smaller, typically standing around 5.2 feet and weighing between 150 to 200 pounds. But the males will often stand between 5 feet 7 inches to 6 feet 5 inches and weigh as much as 460 pounds. To give you an idea of just how much weight that is, let's take a professional athlete, Super Bowl winning Rob Gronkowski. He was 6'5". So if we stand him next to a 6'5 gorilla, they stand at the same height. Rob Gronkowski was in peak physical condition, solid muscle, he weighed 260 pounds. That means the gorilla would weigh 200 pounds more than that, and much of it is muscle. Not to mention, pound for pound, they are so much stronger than humans anyway. Gorillas are more than 10 times as strong as humans, and one punch from a gorilla could shatter a human skull. You add on to that all that extra weight, and you have a dangerously powerful primate. Eastern lowland gorillas like to stay in big groups. Their groups tend to be larger than those of their Western counterparts. These gorillas will spend hours every day eating plant matter. Their diet largely consists of fruit, leaves, stems, and bark. A tiny portion of their diet includes ants and other insects. They don't rely much on that for their diet, as opposed to their Western counterparts. The eastern lowland gorillas travel infrequently and eat more vegetation in order to meet their dietary needs. You may think, since gorillas are so large, that they may not be that fast. We hope for your sake that you never think that while out in the wild with one, you will not outrun it. Gorillas can run at speeds of up to 25 mepa. Usain Bolt, the fastest man alive, did once hit 27 mepaha, but that was for a short distance. A gorilla can maintain a speed of 25 mepa for a little while, so no humans are getting away from them. They are also excellent climbers, and though they don't swing from branch to branch on the trees, they are dexterous and can move around easily. They're strong, they're fast, they're excellent climbers, and since they're a member of the ape family, they're extremely intelligent, able to problem solve and pick things up quickly. So, that's great. We have a good sense of the gorilla, but how are we going to find them? Where is the gorilla? We asked, who is the gorilla? And got ourselves a detailed answer. Now, where is the gorilla? Well, all the gorillas in the world live in Central and Equatorial Africa. The Western gorillas are found in a few different countries on the Western portion of Central Africa. But the Eastern Lowland gorilla is only found in one country, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, though their populations are right next to the border of Rwanda. Now the name Eastern Lowland Gorilla is helpful, but also slightly deceiving. Yes, they are in the eastern portion of Central Africa. And yes, you will find them in lowlands, but not strictly lowlands. You see, there is something interesting and unique about the Eastern Lowland Gorilla. Of all the subspecies of gorilla, this one has the widest altitudinal range. What does that mean? They're highly adaptable. They can be found in the lowlands, they can be found in the mountainous regions, and they can be found in between in transitional areas. They'll live in tropical and subtropical forests, but there are also populations living in highlands that are found in dense primary forests, moist woodlands, swamps, and peat bogs. Adaptability is a key factor to the gorilla's existence. They need to be able to make multiple scenarios work, especially when it comes to their safety. As you can imagine, a big gorilla doesn't have many predators. But that doesn't mean they don't have any predators. 
In fact, they have a couple they have to watch out for, leopards and crocodiles, two worthy opponents that more often will look for a lone gorilla to pick off. Now, gorillas tend to stay in large families, so they have safety in numbers. But if ever they are in danger of a crocodile, climbing surrounding trees can help. However, the leopard is extremely good at climbing trees, so gorillas have had to learn to adapt. They need to use their agility and speed to get away, use their superior ability to move through trees to get away, and if it comes down to it, their power. Well, it's good to know that gorillas have learned to defend themselves against the few predators that they have. Once again, showing off their intelligence and adaptability. These are all going to be very important things when we send a plane out to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and pick up a family of Eastern Lowland gorillas. Because at their next destination, they're going to need a lot of good qualities in order to survive. Where is the Amazon? We figured out where all the gorillas are and specifically the Eastern Lowland gorillas, but what about the Amazonian rainforest? Where is that? And where is it in relation to the gorillas we just explored? Well, we were in Central and Equatorial Africa. Let's head west. All the way through Africa, all the way to the coast, and yes, even across the Atlantic Ocean. After we pass the entire Atlantic Ocean and reach the continent of South America, we're almost there. Lucky us, we didn't have to go north or south, just due west. That's because the Amazon sits on the equator and extends about 5 degrees north and 15 degrees south. It sits in many South American countries, much of it being positioned in Brazil, but it also spans across parts of Bolivia, Ecuador, Colombia, Guyana, French Guiana, Suriname, Peru, and Venezuela. We mentioned before it was big, biggest rainforest on the planet. In its totality, it represents over half of Earth's remaining rainforests. In the rainy season, the Amazon is about 78 degrees Fahrenheit, or 26 degrees Celsius, with relative humidity being about 88%. And in the dry season, it's about 82 degrees Fahrenheit on average, or 28 degrees Celsius, along with a relative humidity of about 77%. Something everyone has to get used to in a rainforest is constant heat and constant humidity. And another thing you have to get used to in the Amazon, all the animals, and all the insects, and all the plants. There are over 80,000 plant species in the Amazon. Plenty of tasty plants to choose from if you're someone with a plant-forward diet. And there are also more than 2 million species of insects, probably good for anyone who snacks on bugs from time to time. However, there are plenty of dangerous ones, especially if you happen to be a being that likes eating ants. The Amazon is home to the famed bullet ants, it's no mistake that they're named that way. A sting from a bullet ant is described as feeling like you were shot by a bullet. Intense pain can last up to 12 hours, and even more pain and discomfort can go on for 24 hours. Unlike the African areas that gorillas are used to, the Amazonian rainforest doesn't have crocodiles or leopards, but they do have black caimans and jaguars. So, we definitely see some similarities here. More possible predators, dangerous ones at that. There are also pythons and electric eels in the water, even piranhas. The water is quite the dangerous place in the Amazonian rainforest. We know there are no apes in the Amazon, but what if we take a family of them and drop them in right now? Gorilla, meet Amazon. The time has finally come. A family of eastern lowland gorillas has been transported to the Amazonian rainforest. They'll stick together, watching each other's backs while they scope out their new surroundings. The first thing they'll notice is the temperature and the humidity. Now, depending on where exactly these eastern lowland gorillas were, it may be a slight change or a drastic change, but not so drastic that they can't handle it. Remember, this is the most adaptable gorilla in the world. They can handle all sorts of climates. They'll be all right. They may want to dip in the river occasionally to cool down, but they'll need to learn right away that the water can be dangerous. There are many dangerous animals in there, but gorillas are smart. They learn quickly, they solve problems, so this is something that they should be able to pick up pretty quickly, and they may know how to figure out which waters are safe and which waters aren't. Another interesting thing is all the ants. They'll want to avoid those bullet ants for sure, but even though the eastern lowland gorilla eats ants sometimes, it's a very small part of its diet so it won't be too much of a change for them to cut that part out. 
they're all about the plants. And they're going to see plenty of plants, that's for sure. We mentioned that the Amazon is home to over 80,000 species of plants. They'll have more than enough options to choose from, so finding food should be an absolute breeze for the eastern lowland gorilla. It is their environment. The forested area, the plants, the trees, everything will be very familiar. The density of it all will be new, but that's fine. The biggest difference in the environment, other than the few predators they need to avoid, is going to be the sheer density of trees and how tall they are. Eastern lowland gorillas do not typically live in areas where there are a ton of trees, especially trees that are very high up. But their gorilla cousins, the western gorillas, do live in environments where they deal with trees. And we know that gorillas are highly intelligent and highly adaptable. They'll figure out how to move around, and if they can't figure out how to get what they want in trees, they'll forage on the ground. They'll find plenty of food there. Conclusion. When it comes to dealing with other animals and insects, some animals will know what a gorilla is, and some won't. Some animals will need to be wary of the gorilla. With a highly intelligent, strong and fast animal, most animals won't want to mess with it. So for the most part, a lot of animals may avoid it. There are plenty of things that will be new and strange to the gorillas, but the great thing about the eastern lowland gorilla is its adaptability, which it will need. They've learned to survive through different areas of their current environment. This new one will take some getting used to and some trial and error, but they'll figure it out. These intelligent, powerful and highly adaptable animals will find a way to survive and thrive in the Amazonian rainforest.